Hey there, I'm Dr. Kristen Adorno. I'm an emergency medicine physician at Cooper University Hospital, and today we'll be going through bedside cardiac ultrasound. Now this is the beginning of a small series on cardiac ultrasound, and this first lecture is going to be focusing on just what views you're obtaining and how to get them. It's always important to keep in mind when you're doing a point of care ultrasound, what specific questions are you asking? We always look at ejection fraction, meaning how well is the heart squeezing? Is it normal or is it depressed? We then look for pericardial effusions, and sometimes we can see pleural effusions as well. And then often we'll look, is there so much fluid that it's causing tamponade physiology based on the way you look at the heart? The third question we ask is equality. So is there a difference between the size of the right ventricle and the left ventricle that can suggest right ventricular strain? There's other questions you can answer, but these are the main ones we do with just point of care ultrasound. Now, what are we looking for? So there's four main windows that we look at with cardiac ultrasound. The first is your parasternal long axis view, then your parasternal short axis view, your apical four chamber view, and your subxiphoid view. We're going to go through each of these one by one, how to obtain them, and how to figure out what exactly you're looking at. Now first I just like to think of the heart as a giant strawberry sitting in the chest with the apex pointing towards the left hip over here and the base of the heart up here. It's hiding right under the sternum and there's ribs right in front of it, which is important to keep in mind because when you're using your probe, you're going to have to make sure that you slide around these bony structures so that you're able to get the views you want. Let's start off with our parasternal long axis view. Now, the way that we're going to review in this video is making sure that you have your probe to the left of the sternum, the patient's left, with the probe marker towards the patient's left hip. Just as an FYI, some different departments, such as some cardiology departments and ICUs, will flip this convention and have the probe marker towards the patient's right shoulder. Not something you need to concern yourself with right now, but just so when you see a difference in some departments, it's just a difference of convention. But for us today, we're going to be talking about having the probe marker here facing towards the patient's left hip. So in this parasternal long axis view, it's exactly what it says. So you're going to be looking at the long axis of the heart. You're going to be taking this slice here is going to be the view that you get on your ultrasound. So I have the image I kept right here for you so you can kind of orient yourself. And I want you to picture it almost in your head flipped about 180 degrees. So to keep in mind basic orientation, you have your probe marker here towards the apex of your heart. And this probe marker is going to correspond to this M up here marker. So here on this side of the screen must be the apex of your heart. And over here must be the base of your heart. And then, as is normal convention with all ultrasound, the top of the screen is going to be closest to the probe, and the further down in the screen is going to be deep into the body. So these will be your most anterior structures of the heart, and here's just right at the skin, and then here's deep down. You'll always have measurements on the right side of your screen that tell you exactly how deep you are in the body. So here's about 5 centimeters, here's 10, etc. So knowing that, what are we looking at? So if this is towards the apex of the heart and this is towards the base, this structure here must be the left atrium. And what does it flow into but the left ventricle? It then leads to your aortic outflow tract here. And then we know from basic anatomy that your the most anterior structure of the heart is going to be the right ventricle here. Specifically, the right ventricular outflow tract is just the cut that you'll be getting in this parasternal long axis view. Now what's the circle back here? This is actually your descending aorta that you're seeing just posterior to the heart, and this is going to be important in the next lecture when we talk about effusions, differentiating if the effusion is anterior to that, meaning more is it more pericardial or posterior, meaning is it more in the lungs or a pleural effusion. So since this is the left atrium and this is the left ventricle, this ditzel here must be your mitral valve, and then here must be your aortic valve. Now with Ultrasound, we rarely ever take stills like this. I just put one in here to review basic anatomy with you. We almost always look at it in video clips. So this is pretty much the same image. We're just going to go through in your parasternal long and review the same anatomy. So here is your left atrium. Blood's going through your mitral valve here. You see it open and closing with each squeeze. You see your left ventricle here, your aortic valve, and your aortic outflow tract. This most anterior structure is your right ventricle. And then back here is your descending aorta. And this is a normal squeeze of the heart. You see the valves opening all the way. You see the ventricle coming in, squeezing well. And again, I just want to show you normal in this lecture. We're going to be going through abnormal in the next one.
so stay tuned. Now to get your next view, your parasternal short axis, you're going to be starting with that long axis we just had and then flipping your probe 90 degrees. So whereas you had it to the left of the sternum with the probe marker facing the patient's left hip, now you're going to turn 90 degrees and your probe marker is going to be facing the patient's right hip. And so you can picture the difference between these two views. That was long axis cutting through all the chambers this way, and now this is short axis just getting a cross section of the heart. So knowing that, since we're getting a cross section of the heart, this structure here must be your left ventricle, and then up here, more anteriorly, is going to be your right, right ventricle. Now what is this structure? This is actually your papillary muscle. So this is important to note because this will be a sign that you are at the right spot. So you can imagine when you're getting a short axis view here that you could be one way or the other kind of out of plane. And this is an important view to look at ejection fraction. So you actually want to make sure that you're right at the level of the papillary muscles to know that you're at the right area to assess the proper ejection fraction. If you're too high or low, you might be seeing different slices of the mitral valve um, which will look kind of like a fish mouth, which we can talk about in the next lecture. Um, so when you see this papillary muscle here, you know you're in the right you're in the right cut of the heart. And again, real ultrasound is always going to be video clips, so let's look at a real video here. You've got your left ventricle squeezing well. We're at the area of the mitral valves where you see a little bit of the valve here, but this is the papillary muscle, the main thing you want. And then you see your right ventricle here and a little bit of a valve flipping in and out of your view. Now our third view is going to be our apical four-chamber view. So just like the name entails, it's not too difficult. It's going to be an apical four-chamber. So we're going to be putting the probe at the apex of the heart, and we want to get all four chambers in this view. So again, picture this nice triangle. This is what you're going to be obtaining. And then we're going to go and look at the actual ultrasound image. So your probe is over here. Now we'll go back to normal conventions where the probe marker is going to be towards the patient's right side. And then here's your marker here corresponding. So this is towards the patient's right, this is towards the patient's left, this is most anterior, closest to the skin, and this is deep down into the body. So since we're starting right at the apex of the heart and going up like this, that should help you figure out your anatomy. So let's start off, this is, must be your left atrium. Here, closer to the apex is your left ventricle. Here's your right atrium, and here's your right ventricle. So since you know these are your four chambers, you already know that these are going to be your mitral valves and your tricuspid valves. Now this is a great view to assess a lot of different things that we'll talk about in the next lecture. So this is great since you're seeing all four chambers for assessing the general ejection fraction and the squeeze of the heart. This is great when you can see both free walls for comparing the left ventricle and the right ventricle when we talk about equality. And you can also often see pericardial fusion in this view as well. So here's a live image of it. Same thing, we've got your left atrium back here, your mitral valve, your left ventricle here, your right atrium here, tricuspid valve, and right ventricle here. Now we're already on to our last view. So this is going to be our subxiphoid view. And this view is a little bit different because rather than kind of cutting between ribs as you do for these views up here, you're going to be going into the abdomen and basically pushing hard to get under the sternum to see the heart here. And here you're using the liver as your acoustic window of which to transmit the echoes through so you can see the heart well. That's why I included this cute little liver uh, image here for you. So again, you're going to keep your probe marker towards the patient's right over here. So this will be the right side. And then most anteriorly, you're going to be cutting through the liver. So this must be the liver most anteriorly here. And then kind of same as the other views, you're going to take this triangle and flip it around in your head to correspond to this one. So since this is going to correspond to this anatomy, this must be your left atrium, this must be your left ventricle, this must be your right atrium, and this must be your right ventricle. And then same with the valve, since we know where they lie, this must be your mitral valve, and this must be your tricuspid valve. Now this is a great view for assessing if there's any sort of pericardial effusion, since you can usually see the kind of the full depth of the heart, and you can see if there's any fluid posterior here as well as anteriorly here. 
This view, just keep in mind, uh, this one in particular, you're going to want to keep an overhand grip of it so that you're not digging your knuckles into the patient's abdomen, since you're going to be pushing pretty hard to get under their sternum to get this view. So then here's a live clip of your sub xiphoid view. This one, we're kind of fanning a little bit in and out of plane in this clip, so you can see that not all images are completely perfect, but you can still appreciate here that this is going to be your left atrium, your mitral valve, your left ventricle, your right atrium, your right ventricle, and your tricuspid valve in between. And this, you can see, is your liver here. This is the window you're cutting through since you're going kind of through the liver to get to the heart here. And that already wraps it up. Those are your four main views of the heart. The next lecture I want you to watch is going to go through basic pathology, and we'll review more of the ejection fraction, effusions, inequality, those big E questions, and how to find them. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me at adorno.kristin at cooperhealth.edu. Thanks again for your time.